Hello, today's video is about recording and vocal delivery on camera and off camera. It's about how to sound like yourself, even if you're in an artificial situation like delivering a speech to camera or recording a voiceover off camera. My case study for today is the very popular and well-loved architect and TV presenter on Channel 4, George Clark. Now, I love watching George Clark. He's so full of enthusiasm. He's a lovely, engaging presenter. I can't think of a single person who doesn't like George Clark. Mm. But he has a couple of vocal mannerisms in his delivery that I find really interesting from a speech coaching point of view, which is not a euphemism for, I find them really annoying and he's doing everything wrong. But this is not meant to be a critique or a takedown of George Clark. I love George Clark. I love his programs. I think he's great at what he does. I think George Clark has three different voices that he uses when he's making his program. The first voice is on camera, talking to people. He's got somebody on the homeowners of the house that's being restored or you know some, some, some people. It's actually quite, Elegant, because you've got that lovely arch at that end, another one at that end, and then the three bays in the middle. It's nicely balanced and nicely symmetrical. The second voice that he has is on camera, but talking to us, directly addressing camera. And this voice sounds a bit more deliberate, conscious of what he's trying to do, but then these bits tend to be scripted, I presume. So, um, so it is a bit more deliberate, the whole thing. It's also not often you find a whole family brave enough to do it together and then live together in it afterwards. And it's a bit less intimate, it's a bit less real, doesn't mean it doesn't work, it's great. And then the third voice is his off-camera voiceover voice. By rebuilding the demolished barn and adding a brand new single story annex, they've more than doubled the living space. And this voice is a bit like the second voice, in that he's delivering a script, so it does have to be more deliberate and, and have a less spontaneous feel to it. The ground floor has two large spaces, one at each end of the building, with two smaller rooms squashed into the middle. And to my ear, he gets some slightly wonky, slightly stilted patterns in his delivery and in the emphasis, which makes it the least sort of genuine sounding of the three types of delivery. Right, so here, George and the people he's making his programme about, they're just talking. And of course, in the edit, they've cherry-picked all the best bits of the chat and they've cut out all the ums and ahs. But um, essentially, this sounds like real conversation. Now, George will have obviously thought a little bit about what he wants to say. The important thing is that it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel scripted. And that's kind of the point of these shows, isn't it? It's about real people doing real things, real building projects, so it needs to have that flowing conversational style. It needs to not feel wooden and scripted. But it's a story, and like any good storytelling, it needs some structure. So this is where the scripted pieces to camera come in. The delivery feels more conscious and deliberate, and this is what I encourage people to do when I work with them on their speaking habits. Um, especially if they're working from a script, you've got to put extra emphasis on the words that matter, and then you've got to put in pauses between the thoughts um, so that the people, the audience that are listening, the people who are listening are, are not don't get left behind, so they can grasp each new thought, each new idea or piece of information before you lay another one on them. It's also not often you find a whole family brave enough to do it together. It's also not often, pause, you find a whole family, big emphasis. It's really clear, you can hear each thought. And he's evidently quite relaxed physically when he's doing it because he's also using loads of eye contact with the camera. He's using gestures really effectively to back up the points he's making. And that indicates to me that he's physically relaxed and open when he's delivering these pieces to camera. By rebuilding the demolished barn and adding a brand new single story annex, they've more than doubled the living space. Okay, now in this format, speaking off camera, this is where George sounds most like a presenter and sounds least like normal, genuine, everyday George. 
This type of delivery is, is, I suppose, the furthest away from what you might call real world speaking. Because obviously a script has been written and, um, and it's a specific length because they've got to get the timing of the editing right. And they've got to get specific points of information across. Even in these sections of the film as well, the whole idea is you take lovely charismatic George Clark off screen for a minute so that you can focus the viewer's attention on the architecture, on the design, on the buildings themselves. And you've got his voice to guide you. It's not in a real life setting. You're not talking to a person. Uh, uh, you're in a studio. This is partly why I think this is the most artificial sounding kind of presenting that sort of George is doing. The most artificial out of his three voices is because um, it's the one where I find I'm kind of a bit distracted by the delivery because there are certain, let's say, patterns or sort of mannerisms in there that don't always fit naturally and organically with what he's actually saying. The ground floor has two large spaces, one at each end of the building, with two smaller rooms squashed into the middle. Squashed in the middle. Exposed beams cut through the dividing wall. The exposed beams cut through the building. Now, squashed and cut, they're verbs, right? So they do have a sense of driving, they're telling you what's happening, but they're not particularly interesting words. You know, it would work just as easily to say with another room squashed in the middle or the exposed beams cut through the building. That's more of a speech rhythm, isn't it? There's also the melody of his phrases. It's the same every time. Each phrase has a little glide at the end, and here's the end of my point, and it just becomes repetitive. Now, I don't think this is to do with George's Sunderland accent, I should point out, because, you know, accents from the northeast of England often have a bit of a lilt to them. How we're, man, you're going to mark us Mr. Trian. It doesn't go, Pff, it goes Trian, sort of lilt. Now, I don't think it's an accent thing, because I've heard lots of presenters on lots of different programmes doing this same, this same thing. Jeremy Clarkson is another one who does it. I've, um, when Gok Wan used to present the cooking show and all these fashion shows, that all the voiceover would be kind of like stir-fried prawns. So this glide, I think, is just a presenter's mannerism that George has picked up or been trained in. Of course, this renovation wasn't just about a house for Adrian and Laura. The adjoining annex for Adrian's parents was a huge part of this project. I might be alone in thinking, oh, George Clark does this weird thing with his toe where it's sort of funny pattern that he does every time. But what would you think if I spoke like this in a normal conversation? Remind me, I need to put that letter in the post and then I need to go to Tesco's and do some shopping before it shuts. And then I'm going to sit down and have a nice cup of tea. Sorry, had some slight technical issues. So um, I've had to switch locations. That's why the backdrop has changed. That's just not how we talk, is it? So why do presenters talk like this when they're doing voiceover? Well, um, I think it has something to do with the artificial setting. You know, you're working from a script and there's a camera there and there's a mic and you're in a studio. There's no real live audience. And it makes us lose confidence in ourselves. And we assume that the script will do all the work of of communicating uh, what we're trying to say. And so we just fall back on tips and tricks. Actually, they make our delivery sound less natural, not more natural. So if I think I'm just gonna focus on the verbs, I'm gonna emphasize all the verbs, and then it'll sound right, and it'll have a sense of momentum. To my ear, it doesn't quite work. Exposed beams cut through the dividing wall. Because it's not that we don't have to do the listener's work for them. We do have to put emphasis on the words that matter, and the verbs often matter. We need to pause as often as the listener or the viewer, if we're on camera, needs us to. And that may not be as often as we feel comfortable pausing in normal everyday speech. But the thing is, whether on camera or off camera, we need to practice these techniques of emphasis and pausing until they feel as natural as our ordinary everyday speech. And then we can be truly confident that we're coming across as effectively as possible, communicating as effectively as possible, so that we will sound as relaxed when we're in presenter mode as we do when we're just like George Clark, on camera, chatting to people in that kind of 
chatting over a cup of coffee feel. So this is what I'd like you to take away from this video. If you've ever done voiceover or on camera presenting yourself and you've got some footage of that, watch it again, listen to it again, not all of it, just 30 seconds of it. Now imagine that you're gonna go over the same point again, uh, but to someone friendly who you've only just met and you're gonna do it in your own words, not the script that you used last time. Now picture this person who you're talking to sitting opposite you. Open the sound recorder app on your phone, press record, and then look up at this person. Explain it to them just as you would if you were sitting having a cup of coffee. So you've recorded that in your own words version. Now listen to your original recording scripted in the studio and now listen to your unrehearsed cup of coffee version. Which one sounds like a real person talking? Maybe something to try next time you have some voiceover to do. And finally, a shout out to George Clark. If you are watching this or anyone who works for you is watching this, keep doing what you do, it's fantastic. Thanks for watching. As usual, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and there'll be more and more frequent ones, I hope, in the near future.